Big Freak and the Milwaukee Bucks with a statement in the first playoff game of 2019 for this number one seed in the playoffs. Man, the big victory, 121-86. I'm Chris Miles, Derek Fisher, Karan Butler, Jason Terry here. I mean, seriously, from the free throw line in a game, Racine. That's disrespectful, <laughs> man. My mom's at the game. She's yeah. loving it. It's crazy. Yeah, so <laughs> you see Giannis coming your way in transition, and you're thinking, what? Okay, you can't it, stay in front of him, right? No. In transition, you have no chance one-on-one, -on -one, that's for sure. And then in transition, one-on-one -on -one for sure, no shot. Tonight, to me, against the Pistons, what you saw a lot of times was as Giannis was coming down one-on-one -on, -one on his defender, he saw gaps in the defense versus the Pistons. So take a little step this way, Chris. Yep. He saw space in between these defenders. So if Karan is guarding Giannis and he sees this gaps, he's picking this ball up. He's getting to the front of the rim before a defense can get there. So to me, adjustments maybe in game two for the Pistons would be anytime you have a great transition offensive player, Tony Parker, LeBron James, Russ Westbrook. You have to build what we call the wall. You guys remember that fella. So Karan is guarding the basketball, but as we get into this painted area, there's literally a wall between the paint, the basketball, and the offensive player. And then in the postseason, you have to be willing to make the effort to build the wall, and then if the ball is kicked out to a shooter or a perimeter player, making the second and multiple efforts to close back out. Well, you say that and in the sense of in the first half, Giannis had 14 points and Brooke Lopez also had 14 points. So when Giannis is driving like that, how valuable is a guy like Brooke Lopez? Well, that's where the value with adding Lopez to their roster came from this year. A stretch five. We, we, we've always we've seen a lot of stretch fours, but he's one of the best stretch fives now in the league, spacing the floor, providing opportunities. And if you do, help off Brooke Lopez. He's shooting it from just over half court and shooting good percentages. Dominance is the word to describe the Bucks in that first half because for the entire game, I mean, look, Milwaukee was great, but Brooke Lopez setting the tone with the outside shot. Yet, I mean, he's just a perfect fit for a guy like Giannis. Perfect fit, and obviously what Giannis needs is multiple shooters around him on the perimeter to give him that space so they can't build that wall. The other a uh, asset to his game is He's a rim protector. Doesn't look like it, but he's a big seven foot two guy. And when they come to the rim, he contests every shot. Okay, so again, when we think about Giannis in transition, okay, he's dangerous. But in a half court set, you say, give him the outside shot. Why doesn't that work? Well, again, you know, I was never as, <laughs> as great as Giannis. So I, I, I can't imagine being guarded the way he is. But for a guy that's a non shooter, typically, we say, okay, space him and give uh -huh. him a little bit of room because so you you're not worried about the three-point shot. So he gaps him just like Karan said. The problem with that in some instances is now without defensive pressure to my body or to the ball, I get a run and start at Karan. And whichever way I'm going, left or right, if I'm going downhill, any contact to me is a foul, especially in the league these days. But again, now you start setting up these situations where the wall is not built because he's able to build up that speed so in theory to me I would consider putting a smaller guy on Giannis a little bit in game two they I mean they I don't think the Pistons have a chance to win this series however in terms of adjusting maybe a smaller guy that can pick him up full court close the space get into his handle a little bit because once he starts going downhill as you saw coming on one foot from the free throw line <laughs> And he's dunking it. Well, when you say that, then I think of another problem that occurs with a guy like Giannis because the height differential. So if you put a guy, let's say your height, a good defensive guard on Giannis, who's almost seven feet tall, then you take him to the post, right? I would think so. This guy knows a lot about that. I'll turn the basketball over to him. I was never double teamed. So we imagine, <laughs> so we imagine in this situation, a guard like you, yep. Giannis would be about what, four inches taller than you. And look at this advantage already. Yeah, so you're already looking at this situation, and Giannis is here, and he has a Reggie Jackson or an Ish or someone, someone like that, uh, what the guard position, trying to get into him and crowd him as much as possible. If if he's in a bad way, you talk to come on the second or third dribble, because that's in a bad way. Giannis is extremely aggressive. Now here's the, here comes the help. Jet is going to come. Now who do does who does that leave open? It's a cutter. Skinny fat, you can cut through. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have somebody on the weak side 
able to knock down the perimeter shots. He's able to skip it across. You got Brooke Lopez, Chris Milton, who's an all-star guy, like that, able to knock down shots, not just take shots. 